This video is about using function notation for transformations on your calculator. Um, a similar thing works on Desmos, but I really want you to use, learn how to use this on your calculator because you're, using, you're going to be able to use your calculator um, more often uh, than Desmos, for example, on tests and quizzes and, stuff, and so forth. Um, so if f of x equals the square root of x and g of x represents the transformed function, I could shift it right and double the height by writing g of x equals 2 times the square root of x minus 3. Or I could write it in function notation by saying 2 times f of x minus 3. Because if I said, if I said here's f of x, and then I said write 2 times f of x minus 3, that would mean takes x minus 3, put it in for x, and to put 2 outside the function, this is what you would get. So on your calculator, it turns out you can actually type it in as 2 times the square root of x minus 3, or you can type it in in function notation. So let's look at what that would look like on the calculator. As you see here, I have already entered my f of 1 as f of 1 of x is the square root of x. Now to enter a second equation on your calculator, you push the tab button. And by the way, if I would want to go back up and change, well, I'll do that in a minute, never mind. So I can type in 3 times the square root of x and get that transformed graph. Okay, so there it is. It's 3 times as tall. And maybe I'll move this over so we can kind of see better, see the part of the graph better. Okay, now, um, if I want to type it in in function notation, I can get the same graph. Okay, so I'm going to just show you that I'll get the same graph. I'm going to add this a different way. So I'm going to type it in uh, instead of three times. Oh, I meant to do two times, didn't I? Sorry, that was what I was, should have done. Um, let me go. This will show you what I can do. If I'm in the if I'm in here, if I do the up arrow key, that gets me back to my original graph, and then I can edit that. Okay, there we go. That's what I meant to do. Um, so here's what this is looking like. Oh, I was supposed to do x. Boy, I really blew this. Um, I'm not going to start the video over again because that would be kind of a pain, but 2 times, and this is to be minus 3. Okay, there we go. So now we have our two transformations done. Um, it's twice as tall and shifted to the right 3. Now, to show you that I can do this using function notation, I'm going to type in um, f of 3 equals, and I'm going to go back to f of 1, or sorry, 2 times, and I'm going to put time symbol here, f1 of, now, notice that f1 is in bold. f1 is in bold because I have already defined what f1 is. So it's saying, okay, I'm using this definition square root of x here, f1 of x minus 3, okay? So I'm saying I'm putting x minus 3 inside the f1 function, which does this, times 2. And if I push enter, same graph as I already had. It goes right over the red graph. It's the same. Now, why, why would that be useful? Why not just type it like I typed the red graph? Well, what this allows me to do now is change f1. I can change f1 to anything I want, and it'll do um, the same transformations. So I'm going to go back through, I'm going to go back tab and up arrow, and um, I'm, going to, I'm going to delete this or turn it off. Okay, so my red graph is turned off. Now the only ones I'm using are F3, which is my transformation, which says take F1, shift it to the right 3, and multiply by 2, and F1. So if I change F1, then F3 is automatically going to change too because it's linked to F1 because I'm just using function notation. So if I tab and go up and change F1, I could change it to any other function I want. So um, I, on the worksheet I said try changing it to X squared. So if I change it to X squared, okay, now what happens? There's my original function and there's my function that is twice as tall, which makes it skinnier, shifted to the right 3. Could I change it to something else? Sure. Push tab, up arrow, go back to my original function. Let's change it to um, 2 to the x. 2 to the x. Let me get that. OK, 
Okay, so now we have an exponential. This exponential graph has been shifted to the right three. One, two, one, two, three. And if I go straight up, when I shifted it to the right three, instead of being at one now, it's up at two. So it's actually been stretched and shifted. That one's a little harder to see what's been done. Um, another place I can edit is to click directly on the function, and that opens up the edit as well. Uh, what's another one I could change it to? Um, 1 divided by x. Okay, so it took the original function, which is in blue, 1 over x, and it shifted it to the right, 3, and then it stretched it. Um, because if I drew in asymptotes, right here and here. It's no longer just one move over one and up one. If I go one, two, three and move over one, I mean I move over up one, it's it's actually stretched over a little bit here. It's it's been stretched away from the original asymptotes. Once again, a little harder to see. I probably need to stop doing these examples and go back and look at the other problem. So if I go back here um, and look at the work here. It says now change f1 of x to x squared. We did that. Now let's say f1 of x is equal to x squared and f2 of x is equal to negative x minus 2 squared plus 4. How do you write that in function notation? Okay, well, I did, I put a negative sign outside the function. I put a x plus 2 inside the function and I added 4 outside the function. Okay, notice there's no squ the squared here is what the function already tells me to do. So that's not a change I'm making. That is not a change. The negative sign is a change, the plus 2 is a change, and the plus 4 is a change. So I say f2 of x is equal to negative f1 of the quantity x plus 2 plus 4. So I changed f of x by putting adding 2 inside the function, adding 4 outside the function, and making it negative. So this is going to tell me to square x plus 2 to make it negative and to add 4 on the outside. Okay? So I could write, so this is a way to write this function with this, um, these transformations done in function notation. So I hope that clears it up a little bit. I think I'm going to take a minute real quickly to show you can also do the same thing um, in Desmos. Okay, I'm going to start by typing in f of x is equal to the square root of x, and you can go down um, to, I don't think you can actually see it, but if you go down the keyboard down to the bottom, there's a little square root sign, square root of x. Okay, now if I go down to the next one, um, and actually what's interesting in Desmos is I don't actually even have to name it anything different, but just, I could call it f of x again. But I'm going to say g of x is equal to f of, no, actually, I would have to name it something different. f of x minus 3, um, and I can put, so you can see it's type as I go. It's already moved. It's shifted to the right 3, and I could put a 2 in front of it, and it's made it double. So notice that it's allowing me to, tr to change my previous graph. Um, but in Desmos, instead of calling it F1 and, and F2, like you do on the calculator, you can just call it different letters. And then I could do another, I could um, do another one and call it, um, let's see, H of X is equal to um, F of X minus uh, 1. Okay, so it took the original graph and shifted it down one. So being able to say, I'm doing something to my original graph. Now, could I have typed it differently? Yeah, I could also type it as um, like h of x is equal to, instead of saying f of x plus 1, I can do the square root of x plus 1. It means the same thing. Or square root of x minus 1, sorry. It means the same thing. See, that purple graph is the same now. Uh, but what this, what these two allow me to do is I could go back and change my original graph. I'm going to delete this one. 
I can go back and change my original graph to a different function and then like x squared, well here's x, <laughs> now it's shifted x, automatically when I change my first function, let's change it to x cubed, it automatically does those transformations to the original graph. So that's what the that's what's powerful about function notation is it allows us to see how transform it allows us to link up one function to another without having to retype them all. Um, so I don't know if that's if that means anything to you, but I just wanted to show you that.